Shalom, brothers and sisters. Thanks for joining me today for another episode of Strange Doctrines. What is his name and what is his son's name, if you know? A lot of people have used this particular verse in Proverbs 30, verse 4, to talk about or to uh, defend in defense that the son pre-existed and they think that his name is talking about Yah the Creator and the Son's name um, being the Son who pre-existed. So let's take a look at this verse and see if that is the case. Today I'm going to be reading from my Facebook page here at the Nazarene Dream. So if you get a chance, go over there and take a look. I've got several articles and uh, videos and memes and stuff like that. So take a look at that. So. Uh, we'll get into this teaching here, Proverbs 34. So this is an article I wrote back in January regard, regarding this verse, particular verse. And it says, uh, the title is, What is his name and what is his son's name? Do you know some things just go without saying? So here's the verse in question right here. It says, Who has gone up into heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in the palm of his hand? Who has wrapped the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name, if you know? So the obvious thing here is that Yah is the one who wrapped the waters in the cloak. He's the one who established the ends of the earth. So we automatically assume that this is actually talking about Yah, God the Creator, um, you know, asking what is his, what is the God's name and what is his son's name. So many people are going to read their theology right into this verse and, and assert that, that it alludes to him and the son, right? And some will go as far as saying, see, the son pre-existed, pre-existed, right? But is this what the verse is actually saying? Is the author asking the reader whether or not they know the creator's name and his son's name? That's the question. And my contention is no, that it is not what is being alluded to here. The author is asking if we know the man and his son's name. He is simply asking a rhetorical question that has a definite answer that does not even need to be answered because the answer is an obvious and emphatic, no man has. No man has done those things. The rhetorical question is asked without an answer being needed, and that's the point um, that's trying to be made here. When, when we add some context, and we, frankly, the rest of the Bible, the rest of the scriptures, it's easy to see that the answer to the question presented to us. So let's back up a few verses to Proverbs chapter 30, verse 2, and I put this in a question-answer format, and we'll see how much more sense it makes. Um, we don't have to infer anything fr from this verse. So Proverbs 30, verses 2 through 6 says, Surely I am more stupid than any man, and do not have a man's understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Holy One. Question. Who has gone up into heaven and came down and come down? Answer. No man has. Question. Who has gathered the wind in the palm of his hand? Answer. No man has. Question. Who has wrapped the waters in a cloak? Answer, no man has. Question, who has established all the ends of the earth? Answer, no man has. Question, what is his name and what is the name of his son, if you know? Answer, he doesn't have a name or a son's name because no man has done these things. So that's what he's talking about here. I, surely I'm too stupid than any man and not have the, the knowledge and understanding of what the Creator has done. So no man has gone up into heaven and come down. No man has gathered the wind in the palm of his hand. No man has wrapped waters in a cloak. No man has established all the ends of the earth. Only Yah has done that. So what is his name? What is the man's name that has done these things? What is the man's name of his son? If you know, it doesn't exist. He doesn't have one. So this is the point of this section of Scripture, is that no man has done these things. No man is capable of these things. No man can even really comprehend or fully understand these things. 
<clears throat> says verse 5, Every word of God is purified. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, or else he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Pretty strong point there. So the point is that no man has done these things and is capable of doing these things. Man is too stupid to comprehend these things, and man needs to understand their place. Let's take a, I don't want you to take my word for it on this particular verse. Let's look at another example, and this is similar in, in, in respect, understanding that it's Yah who does these things, and that man just is not capable of this, these things, and man, the man's name that's capable of doing these things is non-existent, and also his son's name is non-existent because the man does not exist that is capable of doing these things. We read in Job chapter 38 verses 1 through 7. Then Yahuwah answered Job out of the whirlwind. He said, Who is this who darkens counsel with words without knowledge? Now gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you will inform me. So he goes through this question format and I supply the answers here. He says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. So here's the obvious answer, and without being answered, is Job and his friends, they were not there. They did not exist, right? Question, who sets its dimensions, if you know? Or who stretched a line over it? Obvious answer, it was not Job or his friends. Question, on what were its foundations set? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted with joy? Answer, Job was not there. He can't answer. None of us really can answer what's under the foundation of the earth. No one knows how the earth is um, you know, being supported underneath us. It's very, uh, things are just too wonderful for us to figure out. And we see this here. Uh, Yah continues. So they were. this was in chapter 38, 1 through 7. Um, after this kind of uh, rebuke from the Father, from Yah, it continues in this line of questioning into the next chapters um, to make his point. And Job replies, Job replies in verse chapter 42, verse 3, You ask, who is this who darkens counsel without knowledge? Surely I spoke without understanding things too wonderful, wonderful for me, which I did not know. So man is just simply not capable of understanding some of the things that Yah, especially when it comes to his creation, for his ways are higher than our ways. So by not adding to Yah's word, we can eliminate all sorts of strange doctrines that are handed down to us from our forefathers, like the pre-existent son. This verse is not, uh, not suggesting that. It's just been inferred through strange doctrines throughout the years to make us think that this is taught, that what is the creator's name and his son's name that's not what this verse is talking about so i want to share this video i appreciate you taking the time to join don't forget to like subscribe and share to my channel and if you get a chance hop over to facebook the not serene dream We've got plenty of articles there and videos and memes like i said before so i sure love you guys if you have any questions don't forget to put them down below and we'll talk to you soon bless you shalom